Hey guys, this is XJCSX back with part 4B of my event editing tutorial. And where we last left off, we were trying to um, just make this custom event in the game with uh, like the waterfall cliff replacing the scene where the old man meets a uh, lock and all that. Okay, so back to where we were at, we were trying to make um we were gonna go. I was gonna backtrack and I was gonna try making um lock walk all the way up to the edge of the cliff. Okay, so let's find the first action cue that we first edited, which should be right here. Okay, we're gonna edit this and we're gonna make him go up a little bit more times. Okay. I can. I think I have an idea of how I can do this. I can show you guys. Um. Yeah. I think I'm gonna just demonstrate this real quick. Okay, real quick. Um. Eight e. Eight two. Uh oh. Eighty four. Oh, that's right. I changed all these. I forgot. <laughs> I'm dumb. Eight four. Okay. Here we go. Um. I'm gonna take a little stab in the dark here, guys. I think I'm gonna try doing this. Okay. I think this. I. I really do think this will work. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna FD all these right here, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the B0 executable because I used it in one of my videos, I think. Did I use it in one of my videos? Um, no, I have not showed the. I don't think I've showed the B0 command. Uh, let me pause the video real quick. I want to make sure. I, I want to see if I have. Them. Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. No, I have not showed you these guys. This. I'm, the reason I was confused is because I've done so many of these videos. I've had to redo so many because I didn't like them. So I can't really tell what I've showed you and what I haven't. But I, I don't think I've showed you guys the B0 command. The B0. Oh, wait, I think I have. Have I? Okay, the B0 command, unless I have it, it's like you can execute things over and over, okay? So you can go like B0. Wait, I have showed you, yeah, but anyways, you can do a B0. The next byte that follows could be like 04, so that would say execute the following four times, and the bytes that follow will be executed four times, or whatever you, that number was you entered. And then you would always end it with a B1 to say end block of repeating commands. So what we're going to do, because there really is no, um, ID to make a lock go all the way up to the cliff. There's no act moving action byte. The highest you can get is 8. We're going to use a B0 to make him repeat the same thing and go up, okay? Execute the following four times, and we're going to make him go up, up three times. Wait, I don't think I'm on the wrong on the script yet. Sorry, guys. Up three times. So 88, 88, and then we're going to FF this, okay? Oh wait, I, I missed a crucial step. You gotta, you gotta be in an action queue for this guy. Then you gotta put 88, then FF. So count that 1, 2. So that'd be 0, 2. And then B1 right here to end block of repeating commands. So if all goes well, lock should go up 3 times, 4 times. Hope that made sense. So that should be more bytes than what we can get regularly. I, just, I also wanted to demonstrate the B0 command. Uh oh. Yeah, I think I just went wrong. Okay, scratch that, guys. Um, the B0 command can be very tricky. Let's just stick with what we had, okay? We're gonna make him go up. Let's make him go up eight tiles. And hope this video is not gonna be crappy like the other ones. Up eight tiles, nine C. So right here, nine C. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna FD this command. This is gonna be the byte that tells us how much the stores, and we don't know that yet. So just FD it. Quick. Up eight tiles. We'll make him go up six tiles. Nine four. And then we're gonna make him go left up one times one. Left up one times one. A three. So A three. And then we're gonna make him face up. And then we're gonna make him FF. Well, in this queue, now we're gonna go back here and we're gonna count from this byte. And we're gonna count all the way to the FF. I'm not sure if I just explained this already, but if you wanna count to see how many bytes your your uh, action queue stores, you start with a byte that's gonna be how much it stores, and you count all the way and stop before you get to the FF. So you count this one, two, three, four, five. So that's gonna be five. And whenever you make your own action cues, you can change it to either 05 or 85. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with 05 because that's gonna be that a lot better. So if all goes well, you know, you should go up. If not, it might have to be 85. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it needs to be 85. In all honesty, 85. If this doesn't work, then, um, yeah, I'm gonna try pausing the video. Because, I mean, I could have broken it, I don't know. There we go. Okay, maybe he went up a little bit too many. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we made him go up eight tiles. And then we made him go up, let me see, six tiles. So let's make him go up, like, four tiles. That should be enough. Eight C. And then we're gonna make him face left. That should be like just right on. And we're gonna FD this. That way. Yeah. Okay, so this should work. 
It should, in theory. And again, everything's in theory until you start it out. There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Whoa! That was... Yeah, I don't know what that was. Anybody know what that was? I'm thinking this FD command shouldn't be placed inside of an action cube. I'm just making face left again. Let's test it out. Sorry guys, I'm messing up so much. I mean, I really can't do this perfectly. It's pretty hard. There we go. That's pretty good. Took you long enough. We're gonna change all that text later on, but for right now we're not gonna worry about it. Now, what we're gonna do right here is, um, let's see, 73. Okay, we don't want to mess with that 73 command. That 73 command is replacing something with the map, like right here. So here, here it is. Begin action cube. Yeah. Let me see. So right here, we already edited this part, and they play sound effect. Then there's that 73 command, and then we have the action cube for the object 11. And what we're going to do right here is we're going to kind of replace object 11, okay? Real quick. We're going to um, FD this entire action cube for object 11, which is actually the little kid. And we're not going to make him face left, okay? We're going to FD that, and then we're going to exit out of this thing. Now, before we exit out, just so we can get back here really quickly, go ahead and copy this little thing right here, this address, so that way we can get to it quicker whenever we boot it back up. Okay. So we're going to actually save the, oh, whatever we call it, WinTex. Now we're going to go back, we're going to go into um, FF3 USME. And I'm going to show you guys a very, very, very good tip that really help you out whenever it comes to your, I don't know why I did that, your custom event building, okay? So go into FF3 SME, and this is recommended big time. Open up a state, and we're going to open this one up because this is the one we're editing. Okay, now what we're going to do is because I want to have this scene play out as Locke running up, and then he's going to ask the little boy, hey, um, um, do you know where Nars where, where the town called Narsha is? Or where Narsha is, okay? And then the boy's gonna be like, no, I don't. But that's but those two texts that, that are gonna happen. Are, uh, no, the boy's gonna know where it's happening. Those two texts that's gonna happen are gonna be the exact are, are are gonna be different IDs, okay? And what I mean by that is, let's take a look at this, okay? This right here is saying there's the town, and this is the beginning of the game. And then this right here is saying hard to believe an S person down there. Blah blah blah. This is basically the EOP command. You see that these commands right here in, in the table in the text editor, um, the EOP command is basically creating a new body of text and the text that follows is going to be in a new box while still being the same ID of text. So let's see if we erase this EOP command and then save the game. Um, apply. It would all go right here and it would all kind of get all cluttered together, okay? So the reason they use that EOP command was because it looked better and it looked cleaner, yeah? And I recommend you use the EOP command a pretty good bit, okay? So that's kind of what that is, and that's still the same ID of text. You can put a million EOPs and it'll still be the same ID. The only reason you're, you're going to want to limit your EOPs is to kind of make sure you don't just have your characters become a name. Okay, like you want them to be moving around and animating. So now you're, you might be thinking, like, we're going to add two boxes, two IDs of text in this scene, but we only have one ID of text to work with until that little, um, long, until his, um, lock song comes in and they let you change his name, okay? Just think about that, because we only have one ID of text, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to find some text in the game that we don't care for, okay? And this is very recommended. Now, I know some text that's actually not used, okay? It's, uh, right here. This no get away from me. I really don't know where this text is located in the game, but I'm pretty sure it's not anywhere in Narsha. So we're going to edit this, and we're going to pretty much make it whatever we want, because we're going to redo it, okay? So we're going to make this lock, or because we haven't named him yet in the game, we're going to make him man, okay? Hey, lad, do you, do you, I can't type it in, know where Narsha is. And then, now what we're going to do is we're going to go in the event script, and we're just going to go ahead and find this ID for this text, okay? Because this is not the ID, like 36 is not the ID. Some people have been saying that, but it's not. And remember that text was, no, get away. Okay, wait. From me. Okay, guys, I'm not doing so good with this. Okay, maybe this text is not used at all. Like, not even in the event script. Okay, let's just forget about this, okay? Let's go to something else. Like, she's up there. Uh, man. Because it's not even in the event script. That's pretty bad. Hey, lad. Do you know, know where Narsha is? Okay, so we're going to do that, and that'll be good text, okay? And the original text was, she's up there. So what we're going to do is we're going to type, she's up there. There we go. And the ID for this text is 23, okay? So we're going to keep it right here, and then we're going to go back, and we're going to save. We're going to go and hit OK. We're going to hit save, and then we're going to exit out, okay? So go back into Windex now, and make sure you have that address, because it's going to be a lot easier to get to it. If not, then you're bad. 
Okay, there it is. Got to say where's it at. Okay, and the address for this uh, ID was or where we were at was right here. This is the address, that spot where we previously were. Okay, so here we go. We emptied this entire action queue for the character, okay? So we're going to replace it with the um thing, okay? Now let me get back to it. Let's see what these uh, bytes that follow first were, okay? Because I want to make sure this doesn't look, this doesn't look like corny or anything. Um, This is what we just erased right here, this entire spot right here. To end queue. And they just replaced something. And then locks. Okay, yeah, this will work. This will work. Locks can be talking. So we're going to put 4B. 23. Now, if you wanted it to have no text box, you could put 40, or if you wanted to have a text box, you could put 00, okay? So, 4B2300, and then that. That should work. And we can kind of replace this. I get, yeah, we're just going to see if the text box appears, okay? So, what we basically did was we found some text because we didn't have enough in the beginning. We didn't have enough text that we wanted to make our own scene, so we found some text in ff 3 usme that we didn't care for. We edited it. Then we went in the event script. We found the ID for that text. Then we found an, an action queue in the game that we didn't care for. We FD'd it. We FD'd it, and then we put it. We inserted the 4B23. Okay, so that's what we did. That's how you insert text. That you, if you need text, that's what you do. Okay. So what should happen is locks should go up there, and they should start talking. Hey lad, do you know where Narsha is? See. And so everything else is gonna be pretty bad. <laughs> the guy's kind of mad. Yeah, that'd be strange. But yeah, that's that. And I think I might just make this text invisible so you can see everything better. Okay. I wouldn't really recommend you do it the beginning part, but I mean. I think we should so much enjoy just make the game with no text boxes at all, because it looks pretty cool. Adjusting my mic here, sorry guys. So yeah guys, this is it right here. Hey lad, do you know where Narsha is? And now that I think about it, we need some music. Like this this I know y'all eat my system audio is gonna be out when I upload this video, but we do need some music for this map, okay? Now I remember these um bytes that we F these F four commands that plays that play sound effects? We're gonna go back to them and we're gonna change it and we're gonna make a song, okay? So remember that we FD'd them so they're gonna be FD, okay? So let's fade in a song, okay? Let's find a good song and I recommend you just go to um Maddox table, which is right here. Don't better look at my email. Now Maddox got all the um ID number hex bytes for the songs, okay? Yeah, I'll just go ahead and scroll down. Let's find a good song. And let me check my time real quick. Oh, okay, I gotta, I gotta split this video into 4C. Um, see you guys, I'll be back right where we're at.